Welcome to the Morally End. I'm Nick Brooks, and today I am honoured and delighted to be joined by two men who need no introduction, two legends of the shrunken game who, four decades on from their debut at Lords, will give a few English bowlers nightmares. Dulip Mendis and Siddhartha Wedamuni, thank you so, so much for joining us. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure to be with you. Uh, so let's get straight into it. Um, Siddharth, I'll come to you first. Uh, how excited were you when you found out that Sri Lanka were going to be touring England in 1984? I mean, do you remember telling your family and getting on the plane? And how much were you able to enjoy the experience? I mean, these days, tours are quite tightly controlled and structured. But I imagine back four decades ago, you were allowed a little bit more freedom. Absolutely. Yes, uh, Nick, I guess, you know, it was our first official test tour to England and, and I'm sure we were all very excited about it, had uh, great expectations and we wanted to um, somehow establish Sri Lanka as a, as a team to reckon with. That was our main interest. Yeah, I mean, I, absolutely. I think it's fair to say that Sri Lanka came into this tour from an English perspective as quite an unknown. But by this stage, you'd both been to England several times and you'd both had successes on English soil. I think, Dulip, this was your fourth tour and Siddharth, I think it was your third. But tell me, Dulip, how different did this one feel? How big was it knowing that you were going to be getting a test match and going to Lords for the first time? Yeah, it was exciting uh, because we knew that we were playing at Lords, the Vicar of Cricket. And uh, that was exciting. And I must say, before I go further, that this tour especially was taken over by uh, one Mr. Raja Mahindran. And uh, he took over the administration, uh, especially this one. Uh, and there was Neil Chanmugam. Uh, these uh, gentlemen, they are the people who took over this uh, tour. And uh, we started off. Fortunately, we had a few matches uh, before we came into Lords. And uh, fortunately for us and unfortunately for England, uh, they were after West Indies tour. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, it was not a very good tour for England. And uh, it was a good one for us because that was the ideal time for us to meet them. And uh, it was very exciting uh, meeting them. And uh, as Siddharth said, it was uh, a tour that uh, we had to uh, do well to make a mark of it and everyone was looking forward to it because that was the first time we were going to play at Lords and it was very important for us that uh, we uh, give a good uh, impression uh, to everyone who was watching the game all over the world. Yeah, I mean, totally. You make a great point, Dalip. I mean, uh, this year, Sri Lanka have got one three-day three -day game leading into the first test at Old Trafford. You guys had seven warm-up matches, I mean, as cricket has changed. And I think the batters found some really good form. Siddharth, you got uh, 100, unbeaten 100 against Gloucestershire and a good 70 against Sussex right before the test. Arjuna made 100. Aravinda got, I think, 350s. And Dalip, today when we're recording, the 15th is 40 years to the day since you took 26 off a John Barkley over. Um, and as you mentioned, Dalip, uh, meanwhile, England were getting hammered by the West Indies. Uh, did you guys have one eye on that test series? And tell me, Siddharth, how confident were you going into the test, both in your own form and in the team prospects? And was there a little bit of a feeling amongst the squad that this was a good time to play England and that they might just be there for the taking after a long, hard summer? Well, yes, we, we, we did have great expectations. And the seven matches, as you said, really helped us uh, get into English conditions. And uh, quite a few of us did pretty well with bat and ball. So, yes, we were confident. But then you're playing your first test match on English soil. And, and there were the usual concerns and trepidations. But um, we certainly had a good game. Absolutely. And Dulip, any memories of that 26 in and over? Uh, yeah, Nick. Uh, in fact, I just want to clarify that. I think, are you referring to the one that John captained the, uh, the team? 
Yeah, I think it wasn't against Sussex. I think it was the um, Duke of Lavinia or something, an uh, invitational one-day side. Yes, that's right. Yes, I remember that. And uh, we were chasing the target and I can still remember and it came to a stage that we had no chance at all. And um, those days, uh, I don't know whether it's happening now. Those days, I think when you come to the last 10 overs, uh, you can take a decision and then you can call it off or you can continue. And at that stage, we had no chance. Myself and uh, Lalit Kaluperu, if I can remember, we were batting and then uh, John asked whether we want to call it off. And then I told Lalit, uh, we'll give it a go. Uh, why should we stop? We need some batting. And uh, we continued. And then uh, when we said uh, that we will continue, John was not very happy about it. And uh, John sarcastically said, uh, if you win the match, you will be knighted in Sri Lanka. I said, yes, it might happen. And then, uh, then uh, of course, it happened. And then we won the match. So, oh, but, wow. wow. Incredible. But still, we were keeping an eye on that, uh, the Lords, the, because that was the goal that we had to achieve. And it was always there in our mind. Um, of course. And tell me, Dulip, what it was like arriving at Lords. And. A penny for your thoughts uh, when you saw the pitch. It looked like a good batting surface, not too quick, with nice, pretty even bounce. Um, how surprised were you when the coin came down David Gower's way and he opted to bowl? Yeah, really, uh, I was not very surprised, but uh, it, it was looking a good track. And uh, of course, there were some incidents before we started off. Uh, when we, uh, when we, uh, I think Sida can remember when he went to bat, there were a few people who came and uh, demonstrated a bit. And then soon after that, uh, Sida started his marathon innings. Uh, that was one of the best innings I have seen. And uh, batting over many hours. And uh, it was such a fantastic knock that I have seen from Sida. I have seen many of his uh, knocks, but this was, I think, uh, one of the best innings that I have seen. I have seen many innings from the other side, from the non-strikers end, but uh, that was uh, one of the best I have seen. And uh, to come back to your point, I think uh, it was a good track. And then, as usual, when the openers go into bat, we all watch from the dressing room to see how the ball is do, uh, what is what the ball is doing, and how the the batsmen react. So, from the reaction, uh, we could see that it was coming good. But, of course, there is early a little bit of movement where you have to survive. Uh, and uh, once uh, that was passed, I think uh, Sina settled down very well. And uh, then came that uh, marathon innings. Yeah, absolutely, Siddharth. I mean, tell us a little bit you about how you felt um, walking through the long room out to bat the first Sri Lankan to do that in a test match. And then... That delay when protesters came onto the pitch, was that something that disrupted you? Because, I mean, once play got underway, you looked like you found your groove straight away. I mean, I was watching highlights uh, again yesterday and Amal and Ranjan both went fairly early, but you were straight into your stride playing a series of kind of square cuts and drives that were absolutely glorious. And by lunch, you raced to 51 not out. Well... Uh, Nick always, be, be, when I go to bed, my captain gives me very strict instructions and he tells me in choice, Singhalese words, put up the <laughs> and be there till the end of the day. <laughs> Those are the orders I get from my skipper. And yes, going down the long room and uh, getting to the track, yeah, you have the usual pressures, but I must say that demonstration really helped me. I'm very grateful for that demonstration because, Nick, when they started charging into the ground, you know, I really got scared thinking, you know, they could be coming after me or something like that. And I moved towards the slip cordon. And then they were asking me what this was all about and I was trying to explain them. But believe it or not, during those three, four minutes, the whole uh, adrenaline rush the stress just seemed to disappear. And when I batted, I, I just felt pretty relaxed. So I have to be grateful for the <laughs> demonstration. Uh, and of course, we had a good track. I, I think we all batted uh, pretty well. Tulip, as you know, got an amazing uh, 
hundred and miss the twin hundred. I, I can't imagine to date how we missed that. He was just, uh, I, I don't know what happened to him. Botham was bowling off spinners and he just, just threw it away, you know. I think it was too easy. <laughs> Um, but I mean, yeah, it was. You just looked like you were batting and batting, Siddharth. I mean, it was much the same after lunch. England seemed to keep searching for swing, thinking that they might find your outside edge, and you just kept banishing the bowlers to the fence. Uh, were you surprised that they kept pursuing that line outside off stump to you? Well, Nick, I think what they are thinking was uh, I, I was cover driving a lot and playing uh, like square driving, and they consistently felt that I've got to edge something, you know. And that kept them going, bowling at that line. And it was just one of those days where I just seemed to hit everything I got. So um, I, I think that was what happened, you know. They, in retrospect, I think they were just thinking all the time that they can get me out there. And then when Dulip came, they made a mistake of trying to bounce at him. And, uh, Absolutely, that was um, very unwise. And I mean, were you feeling like in you, that was as well as you'd batted when you were, you know, um, just dr driving and everything was coming out of the middle of the bat? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, you have the days when your body is moving nicely and your mind is also working in the right way. It was one of those days, I guess. Uh, and, and I enjoyed sitting back and watching Dulip and Dade and take them apart. So that helped <laughs> a lot. That helped a lot. And, and I mean, I was just uh, following his instructions. He said, bat it <laughs> all day. And I didn't to do um, and Dalip, I mean, Siddharth went to 100, fairly briskly off 175 balls before tea with a lovely square cut off Ian Botham. How was the mood in the dressing room at that stage when you saw him raise his bat? Well, uh, well we were feeling very comfortable. We, and the, all the tension that we had in the dressing room when Sida walked he walked out and everything has gone off because the way that he was batting, you know, that you could see that he was batting well and uh, we could see that the wicket was playing well. But uh, the the most, uh, the, uh, the, the astonishing thing is that uh, I was thinking you have to walk through that long room and uh, when you start, you won't believe Nick, uh, because I think that was the first time, Sida, we, we played at Lodge, uh, a test yes. match. And then uh, you could come down the staircase and then you enter the long room. And as you enter the long room, you could see all the faces turned at you and they are looking at you. And then you walk down the stairs uh, and then into, onto the ground. And uh, for one minute, I, I think we all know that we don't want to get that negative thought of getting a duck and walking back again <laughs> through that and then going back to the dressing room. And we don't uh, think about that even. But uh, it was made easy. I must say it was made easy by Siddharth. And I think even Arjuna got some runs. But uh, by the time we walked in, I think uh, we knew exactly what the wicket was and uh, the way Siddharth and them were playing. And it was up to us to continue from there and get a, a big score as much as possible. And uh, we did uh, we did that. Uh, no, I mean, totally. And uh, did that feeling, Dulip? I mean, one of the interesting things I think about this squad is that on one end of the spectrum, you've got a guy like Diaz de Silva, who by this stage had been playing cricket for Sri Lanka for what seems like almost 20 years. And then right at the other end of the spectrum, you've got two real young whippersnappers in Arjuna and Aravinda. Did uh, the feeling that everything was going incredibly well uh, influence your decision to send Arjuna in ahead of yourself? Yeah, because Arjuna was uh, batting anyway. He was batting uh, ahead of me. And uh, it was uh, left to him because we knew that we were heading for a big score, but we didn't want to let go anything. What all the good work that was done by Siddharth and the crowd, we didn't want to let go. And we wanted to make that, you know, a big total. And uh, Arjuna went in and he got settled down and he batted well. And unfortunately, I think he just before the 50, I think he got out. And uh, then we continued. And uh, it was, I think, Arvind uh, was just starting his uh, glorious uh, career. And uh, that was the beginning. But after that, he had many good ones in England and at Lords as well. And uh, 
well yes i think it was a very good match for us and uh, i think again because every time we start talking about lords i cannot uh, you know stop talking about siddharth snock and because the hours that he batted and the way he batted that was you know out of the world i you know i mean i have seen many knocks but that was one of the best i have seen um yeah i think one of the really impressive things is that siddharth by it looks to me like by the time you reached your 100 you were already struggling quite badly with cramp there was a fairly amusing moment where dicky bird gave you an impromptu massage and uh and i'm struck by the fact that after having runs flew from your bat during the first two sessions and then i think you only added 10 between t and close was that last session of the day a real struggle were you playing through a lot of pain and how much did you have to tough it out to make it to close my intention at that stage nick was to stay the whole day because that's what i was told to do and i just wanted to make sure i was not out i did have some discomfort but uh, i was just happy to be there and make sure i stay for the second day which was useful um dicky bird was really really sweet in that even right through the test match you know the, you get the sense that the umpires were looking at you you know with some kind of uh, appreciation 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 and some kindness towards you you know they were they were very very warm and friendly which was uh, very touching oh that's great to hear and i imagine by the end of that day you must have felt like you needed a good rest sir that <laughs> yes certainly did and i can remember i can remember at that time you know it was getting close when i got the 100 and uh, it was getting a bit dark and uh, those days the rule was it was left to the batsman if the light is bad you can appeal at any time and uh, soon after uh, because sida was telling me get the 100 get the 100 and uh, soon after the 100 i told sida sida let's go in now and then we told him <laughs> that we can't see the ball properly and everyone started laughing and then we went in <laughs> Um yeah so Dilip I want to come on and talk about that first 100 you made now because uh I mean it's a remarkable innings and but when you take came to the crease early on the second day I think Arjuna fell for 84 and the scoreboard was a 292 for 4 I believe was yeah. your plan walking down those stairs that you were going to always going to attack from the off No not really not really you know as Sida said earlier there are some days uh, Nick when you start your inning you start middling the ball your your footwork is working well you see the ball early and uh, everything works well and right from that that day right from the start everything started working well i can still remember there was a bouncer from another bowler early and i it was just a reaction shot and then from then onwards i knew that i was going to get a few bouncers and as predicted it was coming and uh, i never thought that i was going to play like that but it so happened that one of those days that everything what you do it clicks and uh, it clicked that day yeah i mean were you surprised given the kind of the state of the pitch and your strength against the short ball that they went so firmly with bouncers i mean you swatted both of them away for three sixes off short balls and when he was taken out the the attack i think the sri lankan fans started chanting we want both of them i mean how surprised were you by how that was going and how much were you enjoying yourself at that stage well, again i must say that was one of the days it can i could have easily miss it one of those but it clicked and it hit the middle of the bat and uh, it worked i mean my feet started moving i could see the ball early and uh, everything started working and uh, that exactly with that uh, what's uh, that's what because he was trying to bowl bouncers so that i will miss it and then i will get caught but he tried and but he could not get it um and said that you had the best seat in the house for the fireworks i mean what was it like watching at the non strikers end i was just looking back and there are two shots which really stood out to me one was of jonathan agnew where dulip hit it back so hard at him i mean it it wasn't a caught and bowl chance he seemed to 
couldn't even get out of the way. And the other was a hook off both of them that was well above his head. And he seemed to sort of lash it with both feet off the ground, well into the stands. I mean, what was it like seeing those shots from the non-strikers end? Well, one thing I do when I'm batting with Dulip, I keep an eye on that ball like a hawk because it comes back at you <laughs> so fast. And I'm used to, even at practice, when I bowl at him, I bowl and virtually run backwards because he hit that ball so hard, it's unreal. Uh, I dread to think what would I, what it would be if he was playing 2020 cricket today. He would be murdering that ball. So, yes, one thing I always do is watch the ball very closely when he's batting. He hits the ball so hard. And yes, Agnew, I think, got a bit of a shock when that ball came back to him so fast. Um, no, entirely. I mean, I mean, I would I mean been, uh, Nick, I mean, it's so funny. I met uh, Jonathan after that, you know, after many years, uh, somewhere I met him and he was seated uh, in the at the reception in, in one of the hotels. And uh, I was going past and really I did not see him properly. And I was just going past him and then he said, hey, 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 where are you going? You thought I'm bowling at you. Come back here and say hello to me. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine that. He's such a friendly guy though. Yeah, Jonathan Agnew is a lovely, friendly guy. Um, and I mean, see that you just kept batting and batting, and I think it it took you a little bit of time to move between 100 and 150. But then you started to play a few more strokes. Were you feeling inspired by your skipper, or was that a response to the state of the game that you felt a bit more freedom, or um, and was the cramp easing off a, a bit at that stage? Yes, the cramp was only for a brief spell, and after that, I felt much better. But as I said, you know, uh, Dulip said, you just got to bat through the innings if you can. And that was all I was trying to do, Nick. I was just uh, following instructions from the skipper. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Dulip, you got to that 100, as you said, right right before close in the evening gloom of just 112 balls. Uh, was that the proudest moment of your career to date? Yeah, I think so. And... Uh... Because uh, getting runs at Lords and uh, captaining the team at Lords, and for the first time you are playing at Lords, and uh, I think it was just a coincidence that it it was my birthday as well on that day. Of and, course. Uh, so I think uh, it was one of those days and one of those years that everything uh, worked well for me and the team. And Nick, I yeah, think, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I think a very important thing for us was as a team, we felt that we needed to make an impression on the English team and in England in general because you know it's the home of cricket and we were at Lords, uh, the mecca of cricket. So we were very keen to make an impression and to make sure that the other countries think we are no pushover. So that was, I think, uh, what we were really wanting to do. And I think we did achieve that. Uh, I think in in droves. And I mean, could you guys sense after two days of cricket, England had only taken four wickets. They'd been hammered to all parts. They'd watched Yusidat bat for two days without really being troubled at all. Could you sense that they were incredibly downcast at that stage and that maybe some of those guys were wishing that they didn't have to be there anymore? Well, coming after the West Indian tour, I'm sure they would have been yeah. <laughs> wishing that they weren't around. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm sure they were very disappointed. I think they would have, I mean, maybe after the West Indies tour, they would have thought that they can recover some lost prestige uh, facing the Sri Lankans. and But unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. It went the other way. Indeed it did. And I mean, Siddharth, you finally fell for 190 the next morning. Uh, just an incredible inning. Still the longest at Lords in a test match in terms of time, well over 10 hours. And the biggest score by a visiting batter on debut in England. Uh, how proud did you feel of that achievement? And equally, I mean, Cricket's a funny game. I remember Percy saying that he was waiting for the double hundred so that he could run inside the boundary rope. And was there a glimmer of disappointment that you'd gotten so close to that huge landmark and fallen just short? Well, when you're playing these games, uh, Nick, 
<laughs> you really think of all those things, you know. Um, maybe I would have been a little disappointed that I got off. The thing is, in our time, we didn't have any physios or anything like that. And after the second day, I think I was a little stiff. Uh, you know, the muscles weren't moving as well as they should. And early morning, um, I, I, I think I was a little late playing that shot. But I, I don't think we thought about all those things when we were playing. You know, we just wanted to have a good game, make sure Sri Lanka did well. And it's later on that people say, okay, did you miss this? Did you get that? But at that time, no. We were just happy we did something uh, to contribute to the team. I uh, Same same feeling. Uh, I must say that, uh, as Sida said, uh, I missed the second 100 uh, in the second innings. But at that time, uh, you don't uh, really think about it. Okay, you missed it. Uh, I would have been happy happier that if I got it. But... Uh, uh, it didn't really cross my mind. Okay, you have missed the second one. But later, I must admit, even if, if you ask me now, yes, I regret it for not getting it. <laughs> yes, because and you, know, you know, have had two you know, you know, you know, has the same. Uh, so, yeah, late only you regret it, but not at that time. Yeah, I mean, that would have been, yeah, your, as Sir says, your second twin hundreds and you would have become the second man at Lords after just George Headley. And I mean, of course, it's a shame that that achievement didn't happen. I think we can all agree that you deserved it. But I don't think anyone who's ever enjoyed cricket would want you to change the way that you batted just for um, to reach a landmark because it was utterly thrilling, both of those innings. Um, and I mean, Dulip, declaring at 491 for seven, in that first innings, you must have been in dreamland, right? That I mean, uh, no matter how much confidence you took into the test, I think I can't imagine that you thought that you would be in that position after um, two and a half days. And was there a feeling in the camp at that stage that you could maybe go on and win the match? Yes, I think uh, we were in with a chance, but I think there were, I think, one or two uh, key catches uh, went down. And uh, with that, I think it went off. Uh, because we had a slight chance, Sida, if I can remember, I think there was a chance that uh, we could have gone for it. But yes. I think with uh, those one or two catches, I think going, I think it faded off. I think at one thirty or for 5, uh, yes. Alan Lamb was dropped. In fact, the joke is, uh, Amal says, if he didn't go for it, I would have dropped the catch. And it would have <laughs> out. But it was coming to my hand. And Amal tried to get to it and it just uh, deflected off his hand. But if we had Alan at that time, it may have been a different yeah. game altogether. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think 130 for six, they would have been well short of the follow on and really struggling. And I think the previous evening as well, Aravinda dropped quite a um, straightforward one off Chris Broad when he was just getting into his 40s. And I think he went on to make 90 odd. So, I mean, there were a couple of chances, a couple of small hinge moments that maybe made the difference between a draw and a victory. Uh, but nonetheless, there was a real contrast between the manner in which you guys batted and England's approach. I mean, I think Chris Tavare bore quite a lot of criticism for 14 off 90 odd, but there was one session when I think they only made 49 and the sense that they really dropped anchor and did everything that they could to uh, stave off losing that game. Was there a sense of bit of frustration about their approach in the field or were you guys just happy with how things were going that you'd really gotten on top of the test? Well, I think we were getting on top of the test, but at the same time, you know, we knew that, you know, he was going to be there for some time. But if we got him, yes, it was good. But um, I think at the end of it, that we felt that, yes, we were right on top at the end of the test. Um, and I mean, by the final day, I think England must have felt that coming back for that day five was pointless. But uh, Sri Lanka managed to inflict a good deal more pain onto them. First of all, Amal Silva made a lovely yes. languid century. Uh, do you guys have, what are your guys' sort of reflections on that knock? Yeah, Amal was a very free-flowing player and uh, he, he did really well to get a super 100. Then Dulip went and took them apart for his 90-odd. So, you know, we, 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 all in all, it was a great game for Sri Lanka. 
to this. Oh, yes, it was. It is. It was. Um. Yeah, Dulip. Uh, Sri Lanka were 118 for five when you arrived at the crease on that final day. Uh, but once again, it seemed there was absolutely no thought of digging in. Uh, you made 50 off your first 65, and then you seemed to really get into the mood. I don't know if Pat Pocock had said something to you, but um, you took 44 off the next 31 and smashed him to all parts. Uh, what do you recall about that innings? Well, I think uh, I, I batted quite low in the order. Uh, because, yeah, I think you came in at seven. Uh, yes, I came in at uh, number seven, yes. And uh, well, I mean, I started, uh, as I said earlier, everything was connecting and uh, everything was coming right. And uh, uh, I could see the ball early and uh, my reflectors were right and uh, everything worked. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I just could not read the 100 mark. Um, and Siddharth, can you recall what the mood was like on the balcony watching that innings? I mean, it was a real kind of, um, it felt like a carnival kind of moment. But Nick, that's how Dilip normally bets. We always see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was just another day. It's just another day. He's never defensive. Whenever he um, runs, it was uh, at record speed. <laughs> um, well, I mean, yeah, it's, oh gosh, it's a wonderful innings to look back on. And Dulip, I think we have to talk about that dismissal. Uh, I don't think the listeners would forgive me if I glazed over it. So I'm sorry to bring it back up. But Ian Botham bowling some quite gentle off spin, And it looked like you were trying to um, pummel him all the way to South London, fetching one from outside the off stump. And it ended up uh, going straight up in the air. No, 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 no. It was not that. Because everyone whom I meet, they always ask yeah, that you were trying to hit a six and you got caught. I said, no, it was not. I was just trying to flick. I was just trying to flick and it got the top edge and just went up and he was. I was caught, caught and bowled. And he caught it off his own bowling. It, I was not trying to go for a big hit. I, was, I just <laughs> flicked and it got the top edge and went up. We haven't still forgiven um, him for it, Nick. <laughs> 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 well, no, I think... I think we all remain a tiny bit disappointed that he didn't get the second hundred that he deserved. Um, but I mean, look, records are, uh, records fade. And I think what endures is uh, glorious batting. And I think the overriding feeling after that much match must have been one of incredible euphoria. The Sri Lankan crowd seemed to grow through the course of the match. Uh, see, that's you were named man of the match with the England players. Congratulatory. And was there an awareness um, of what an achievement this was? Did you guys celebrate after the test? What was the, can you give me a snapshot of the mood? Yeah, I think we were very happy, very happy with how the game went. And as I said, uh, we felt as if we had... Uh, shown the world that we, we are going to be a force to reckon with, we, which was all that we were wanting to do. Yeah, that's right. And we did celebrate after the match. And uh, it was good celebration after the match because uh, we were waiting for that. And uh, as Sida said, we made a big impact, huge impact uh, at Lord's uh, in that game. Yeah, well, I mean, I think across London and back in Sri Lanka, many a glass of Lion Lager and Arak were raised to the two of you that evening. And uh, it wasn't just the Sri Lankan fans. I think Lords in 1984 opened the world's eyes to the poetry and the power of Sri, power of Sri Lankan batting. I mean, Siddharth, you were named one of Wisdom's five cricketers of the year, which is, you know, a huge achievement to be the first Sri Lankan to be given that honour. And um, the re reaction from the press was really resounding and emphatic. And I think it was the Daily Telegraph's writer, Dickie Dodds, who described it best for me. Uh, he said that your guys' batting was a delight to the eye, satisfying to the mind, and an inspiration to the heart. Uh, and um, he compared the English crowd to men who'd lived in a gloomy jungle all their lives and had suddenly seen the light. I mean, uh, tell me what it feels like 40 years on hearing those words, um, looking back four decades later, how proud do you guys feel of what you achieved over the course of those five days? You know, Nick, something I would like to say is one thing we found uh, and I think that it's something really special. 
the British crowds, the English crowds are very appreciative of good cricket, yeah. which you don't see in many countries. They applaud good cricket. And it was lovely to see, to experience the way they cheered you when you made some runs and came back to the pavilion. So that's something which will always uh, live with me. And I'm sure Dilip will echo the same sentiment. Yeah, yeah I endorse it. I endorse it wholeheartedly. I, I do that. Fantastic I think it is uh, the British crowd is uh, one crowd that I have seen. They appreciate what you do. And if you have done something good, they really appreciate you. Yeah, and I mean, um, I think, yeah, the whole of England and the whole of Britain, uh, their view of Sri Lankan cricket after that match kind of dramatically changed. And look, Sri Lanka was still very early in Test match cricket. And, uh, you know, I think you guys had lost seven of your first 11 tests. But I felt like that match was a real springboard. Uh, you know, it was a year later that you got your first test victory over India. And it seems from an outsider's perspective, like that performance at Lords really helped self-belief flood into the Sri Lankan side. Is that a fair reflection? How big of a springboard do you think Lords in 1984 was? Well, I think it certainly made us more confident because at the end of the day, it's all about exposure, Nick. And we just felt that we could brush shoulders with the best players in the world and still do well. And I'm sure Dulip will confirm the same thing. You know, we just got better and better and better. And uh, that's how the game changed in Sri Lanka. Yeah, that gave a lot of confidence, uh, Nick. Uh, soon after that game, you know, the people, you could see the cricketers, the players who played in that game, they were full of confidence. And going, going for the other games after that, I think uh, that gave a lot of confidence to the players and to the public that these boys could do well with even the best in the world. Yeah, I think after that game, uh, it was undeniable that Sri Lanka could stand up and compete. And uh, it feels to me like one of the really seminal moments in Sri Lankan cricket history. And... I think it's testament to the quality of your batting that we're still talking about it 40 years later, that we're celebrating the 40th anniversary. Um, if anyone who's listening or watching hasn't seen the footage, I entreat you to go onto YouTube and watch it. There are some wonderful highlights, I think half an hour from every day, and it's hugely entertaining, hugely joyful. And I think we are all hoping that some of Sri Lanka's current batters can channel a bit of the spirit of Mendes and Wetamuni this summer when the tests get going. Uh, so, Dolip and Siddharth, I want to just say before we wrap up, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Uh, it's meant the world to me. It's a huge pleasure and a privilege for me to be able to look back on this test with you guys. And I really hope we might be able to persuade you to come back on the show again in the future. Thank you. It was a pleasure, Nick. Thank you uh, for having us, Nick. Thank you. Yeah, thanks uh, a lot. And, Anytime, uh, it means the world. And I'm sure that um, having you guys on has brought some new viewers to the Murali End. So if you're watching for the first time, please do like and subscribe. We will have lots of content for you during the course of the three tests coming up. And um, yeah, one final big Murali End thank you to the two legends, Dalit Mendes and Siddharth Wetamuni. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks.